in power system if the voltage is not controlled you will get different voltage than what you desire for example you are sending 245 kilovolt after generating station and at the receiving station ideally you should be receiving 245 kv or any value near to that but if you are getting actually a 400 kv that's a problem it is not just the problem with the substation but it will also have impact on the consumers so definitely it's a serious problem in power system controlling the voltage maintaining the voltage level throughout the power system and that's where static var compensator comes into picture in this video you will understand why we use static var compensator in power system and what it does Now in one of the previous video in which we discussed about what is surge impedance loading in power system in transmission line a lot of you commented that you want to have an introductory video on a static VAR compensator and based on that feedback here is a dedicated video talking on the static VAR compensation. Now in the power system especially when you have long transmission lines and which is a, a regular situation the problem is that when we do not have sufficient load on the transmission line the voltage at the receiving end goes up and i'm not i'm not talking about 10 15 percent here and there i'm talking about huge increment in the voltage level so for example if you're sending 245 kv you might receive 400 kv or more at the receiving substation this is a serious problem in power system this is called ferranti effect we discussed about what is warranty effect in one of the dedicated video. If you want to know more on that, uh, you'll get a link for that video down in the description. Now what happens is because there is no sufficient load on the power system on the transmission line, the inductive reactance is very, very low. And as a result, the capacitive elements dominate and then the voltage adds up and at the receiving end, you get very high voltage. Well, same thing happens if the load increases beyond a certain limit in on the transmission line the voltage drops because in this case now the inductive reactance is dominating and there is short of capacitive reactance so the voltage goes down let me actually show it to you using a circuit simulation so here is a simple transmission line uh, model that we have and here is our load after the switch now the first situation uh, let's consider the transmission line is lightly loaded or there is no load on the transmission line and now in this situation we will monitor uh, the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage so here you can see the green dot or the green waveform indicates the sending end voltage and the purple dot and the purple waveform indicates this receiving end voltage you see we are sending 353 kilovolts but at the receiving end we are getting 522 kilovolt that is huge for sure your substation equipments are not meant for this they are meant for 353 kilovolts or 5 or 10 percent here and there but this is a serious problem and this will cascade throughout the power system so and this is this is a problem when transmission line is lightly loaded if you load if there is a load uh, of course then that problem goes down now you see we have connected load to the transmission line and both the sending end and receiving end voltage are almost equal right but you will say, okay, we talked about this in previous videos also. Uh, we also know the solution to this problem. The solution is we add shunt reactor in the system. So when we add shunt reactors, we are adding the inductive reactance in the system so that the capacitive reactance will not dominate because inductive and capacitive element are exactly opposite to each other. When we add inductive reactance, the capacitive reactance will go down and the resultant reactive power will be limited in the system and that's what happens when we add reactor you will see even if the transmission line is not loaded the voltage stays under control let's add that reactor and see what happens now here we have added a reactor into the system now let's start the simulation and see what happens now currently the transmission line is lightly loaded we have not connected reactor into the system and the situation is as it is the receiving end voltage is very very high now let's add the reactor the shunt reactor into the system and see what happens now you see uh, the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage are getting equal why 
initially there was only the capacitive element now we have added the reactor also into the system so they are now kind of balancing out each other right now that is the solution to the problem of voltage uh, regulation voltage control that we have we talked about this also in the dedicated video where we discussed why we need shunt reactors the problem with this methodology is let's say now uh, the shunt reactor is still there in the system and the load came back uh, on the transmission line because of course uh, the transmission line load is dynamic now you see when the load is added uh, the voltage has dropped right this receiving end voltage has gone down than the sending end voltage this is also a problem because the induction motors will not work there will be uh, misoperation of the equipment happening and this is a, this create a lot of problem high voltage and also the low voltage so certainly this is not acceptable so how do we solve this well either we add capacitive element because currently the inductive reactance is dominating so we add capacitive element capacitor banks and that will solve the problem or we can disconnect the reactor from the system and you will notice that now uh, the voltage both the voltage will balance uh, out now you will say okay that's the solution what is the problem here <laughs> well of course there are problems the problem is as we discussed when the load goes on you will have to disconnect the inductor or if the reactor or the inductor is fixed in the power system you will have to add the capacitor banks right and since the load on the transmission line is dynamic it keeps on changing morning the load is different evening is different afternoon is different night is a different it's changing the circuit breaker that we use for the switching operations of uh, capacitor banks or inductor uh, well they are not suited for frequent operations of these devices why the problem lies in the very nature of these devices now we know that in the inductive and capacitive element the voltage and current are not in phase with each other right they are 90 degree out of phase by each other if the circuit is purely capacitive or reactive for example uh, let's take the example of capacitive circuit now we know generally the circuit breaker will do the switching operation at the current zero condition right now at the current zero condition in capacitive or um, inductive element the voltage is at maximum because of the nature of that right and this creates the problem when we switch at this position the voltage is maximum and it may have the restriking possibility in the circuit breaker and that's why whenever we have to do the inductive switching reactor switching dedicated reactor switching uh, generally the circuit breakers are provided or it is recommended to have controlled switching devices csd in place now, what csd will do csd will sense the right position the right conditions to switch and then do the switching operation uh, and that's why the switching operation of capacitive and inductive element is not easy and the breakers are not suitable for frequent switching operations of course certain number of operation you can do but frequent switching is problematic and also if you keep the reactor continuously into the system uh, it also impacts the power transmission capabilities of the transmission line so certainly we have problem with the shunt capacitors and uh, uh, shunt reactors the frequent switching the power transmission capability so how do we solve this problem well that's where the static var compensator comes into picture now what is the static VR compensator? Well, in static VR compensator, we will still be using the inductor and capacitors. Of course, without that, we cannot control the reactive power. So we are still using the reactors and capacitors, but we are doing their switching with the help of thyristors. We have removed the circuit breakers and we are now using thyristors. Now, thanks to the advancement in the power electronics, thyristors can be used for switching of this uh, equipment and you can do n number of switching and there is no problem at all so that is one of the biggest advantage that static var compensator offers so what they do is they basically sense the voltage in the system they basically sense or monitor the reactive power into the system and do the switching accordingly automatically you don't have to do anything manual automatically they are capable of switching on and switching off of the certain parameters let me actually show you uh, one simple diagram of static var compensator 
So here is a simple diagram of static VAR compensator what you can see. So we have the bus bar, the transformer and here you see we still have the inductor, we still have the capacitor but the inductor is controlled by the thyristor and we have a fixed type capacitors. Now we can control the current that flows into the inductor by controlling the firing angle of this uh, thyristors and we can have a very good control over the reactive power. Now I say reactive power because in order to control the voltage basically we have to control the reactive power and that's where the concept of power factor is very very important. If you don't know what is power factor I have decoded uh, the power factor in very very easy language in one of the video you will find a link for it also down in the description. So basically voltage control is basically the you know VAR compensation reactive power compensation and uh, inductor and capacitor helps us in achieving that. So if you control this uh, of course the reactive power will be controlled and ultimately the voltage will be controlled right. Now in this arrangement you can see uh, the inductor is controlled by the thyristor but we have fixed type capacitor. Now if you say QL is the reactive power consumed by the inductor then we have QC as uh, the power delivered by the capacitor into the system. So the resultant power would be Q that is equals to QC power that is delivered by capacitor minus QL that is power that is consumed by the inductor. So the resultant power is this. Now if you control any of this either the QC or QL uh, you will be able to control the complete reactive power into the system. So in this particular example we have we are controlling the QL and we are keeping the QC fixed. Well there are other methodologies also where you have thyristor controlled capacitor and maybe reactor can be fixed. So that arrangement is possible in the static VAR compensator. You control any of this thing and the total reactive power will be controlled and thereby you will have a better control over voltage. Static VAR compensator improves the voltage stability. They also help in uh, improving uh, the power transmission capacities of the transmission line. So that's why they are very very important in power system. So that's why controlling the voltage in the power system is very very important. Now this is one of the method of controlling uh, the voltage in power system static VAR compensator. Now if you decode the name what is what does it mean? Well static. Static it, we are calling it static because there are no rotating parts that we are using so static and then we have VAR compensator that basically means we are controlling or compensating the reactive power for better voltage stabilization for better voltage regulation. Voltage regulation as I said is nothing but controlling of the reactive power. If you want to have a better understanding of this uh, I'll put videos of uh, power factor and how, do, how we can improve the power factor down in the description you can go and check them out. Now this is one of the method there are multiple methods in which uh, you can control the voltage in the system so we have excitation control and voltage regulators in generator station. Uh, you can control the voltage by tap changing transformer, booster transformer, shunt reactors and capacitor which we already talked in our previous videos, static VR compensator we discussed about that and then also the synchronous condenser. Now if you want me to make dedicated videos talking about each of this voltage control method then comment voltage control in the comment section below. If I get enough comments then for sure I'll be creating a dedicated video like this on each of this topic. So that's all for this video guys. I hope you have clear idea about why do we need static VR compensator in the power transmission and what it does. If this video was helpful then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing. And as I said uh, all the relevant video for this I'll put down in the description especially the power factor one definitely go and check it out. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.